Welcome back everybody. I did want to check in real quick and uh, hopefully really quick and show everybody kind of where I where I ended up with on the texturing. Um, give you some ideas of, of the some of the methodology and, and craziness that I used uh, to get where I got before we really get in and start creating a custom rig for this. So um, let's zoom out here. Here's here's the character I ended up with. Um, got kind of a I don't know, professory looking sweater vest going on over the bow tie and a, and a button up shirt. Um, I'm going to kind of pan around and see some of the highlights here. You can see I've got the bump map uh, pattern that we kind of created with the noise earlier all over most things. Um, and we've got a little scratch here um, that we'd played with earlier. Um, I took the idea of the of the Charlie Brown um, zigzag line and and incorporated that into this sweater. Uh, updated the bow tie a bit and did some other things. Um, I do want to point out a few of the th random things I did um, that were fun. So you can see on the leg here, I've got this uh, this crease just down the side, um, and I got the same thing on the torso. This crease right here. And I did a little bit of creasing on the arm as well. And that was all accomplished with just a really fine um, light line in my bump map uh, to kind of to kind of really mimic what the um, the actual plastic molded Lego looks like. Um, before I get too much deeper, so everything else I used was a, I used a blend texture with that with that same noise uh, bump map on everything. Got a little cap here that I made up. And the difference here is I went with, uh, instead of the blin, I did a, I believe it was the fong. All right, so my Lego hand here is a fong texture. It's a little shinier. And, and also, I did not put any bump on that. Since the hands, if you really look at your, at your Lego characters uh, in your giant plastic vat of, of Lego that I'm sure you have around your house, doesn't everybody? Um, the hands are a slightly different material, slightly different plastic. So I was just trying to mimic that. So everything else is a blend. The hands are a fong with no bump. Um, and I think this guy's just about ready to ready to go as far as uh, our custom rig that we'll be working on later. Uh, I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you just some of the things that I did in Photoshop. All right, so here's, here's the, the torso texture. Um, of course, we got the, the neck here. Let me just go ahead and turn on the outline, and you can kind of see better what's going on here. Um, so this is all covered up anyway, and so I've got the collar, and I've got the bow tie kind of hanging over, um, and just really, you know, kind of kind of got a little OCD and a little creative um, and had fun while uh, the family sat around and watched Doctor Strange, which I had already seen. So, you know, I do have a lot of fun... Uh, sitting in front of the TV with a laptop and, and only half paying attention and, and getting creative. So this is the this is the texture for uh, the torso. Here again is the bump map and I can zoom in a little bit and this is kind of what we worked on earlier but here's the creases that I added. Right, So I've got this this crease line, doesn't need to be this long at all, but this crease along the top. Um, I'll turn the highlights on and off. You can see I've got the crease down the side and it even wraps onto this bottom piece um, if we were to lift those out. And then I also added uh, just a little bit of a hint of that, that Lego word again on the top of the neck um, in my bump. And then of course the, the scratch, I lightened that up a little bit. Um, let me just show you some of those things. I don't even know what layer three is. I didn't name that. Shame on me. Let's see what happens. I still don't know what layer three is. Oh, well, that's because I'm in the wrong group, naturally. All right, so I've got, I've got the words here. Um, I set the, there, it's a white, white colored text and I set the opacity to 20. Um, and with the slightly opaque on the bump map, it, it allows some of the noise to bleed through and then just isn't nearly as pronounced, right? When we're, if we're using solid white, as we saw before, or solid black, we get really, really overly pronounced almost bumps. Um, and the crease is the same way. So I've got on my creases, I've just got a white color overlay. Um, but then I pulled the opacity here down to 15, uh, as you can see there. So that's how I created those bumps. Um, the other thing I, I wanted to point out, so I've got this hat. 
Um, I did I did much the same, right? I've got the same the noise as the bump, and then I got another pattern overlay here just to add some texture to the hat itself. Um, and then I've got the just the little dot on top, that little rivet on top of the hat, bumping out just a tad bit. Um, the leg doesn't make sense until you turn this on. And so here's the I, when I was laying out my UV, I put I lined these all up so that I could just do one solid chunk of the the brownish for the shoe and be done um, and then this is the the top of the foot and I got some just really poorly drawn um, shoelaces there which I'm not happy with and I'll probably go and fix later because I'm crazy like that but that's the way it is for now um, and then the bump the same way right kind of turn these on and off I've just got one line going down the side of the the outer leg and then an even finer line you, if you can see it yeah, I know. I'm not really selecting that. Thank you. The smaller crease, I've got an opacity of 10 on. Um, and then the longer crease is at 25. And so let me just zoom in. And again, this is this is a result of me being um, dangerously and ridiculously OCD and holding an actual Lego figure in my hand um, as I've been working on this. And so I noticed the creases where the, where the plastic molding takes place. And so I added those in. So I can turn that one off on um, and there's where they line up. We'll go back to Maya and, and check that out, right? So this is this is that line in the bump map and then just an ever so slightly faint line there. Um, the last thing to, to really highlight for you, I mean I think I think you did all the things. You should have done all the things as far as UV unwrapping everything, and in my case, yes, I realized the hand was ridiculous to unwrap because I didn't put a bump on it, and uh, I didn't do anything but just the solid yellow. But we like to practice, so we practiced. We did the we did the automatic unwrap. Here's where it is later. If I want to give this guy, you know, a good uh, glove or you know somehow paint on there the the classic used car dealer um, set of rings across his fingers whatever that is, I've got it. Um, so I did, I unwrapped everything, but I only unwrapped each leg and each uh, hand and arm once, and I'll, I'll go back and, and recreate some of what I did there. The arm was much the same, um, just a solid color um, with the creases here, right? So I, I just followed some of the lines that were already existing in the, in the UV mesh itself, the UV unwrap itself, on well, the mesh itself as well, So I followed that line and I used uh, just a pencil. I'll show you a really quick quick trick with the pencil here. While we're here, um, show you some last tips and tricks. So I'm on my creases line. It's got a color overlay. That's cool. I've got my 25% opacity, right? Um, but what I can do is if I've got this pencil on, I can go ahead and I can, um, I'll just make a line out somewhere else. All right, or I can follow some of these lines, but I'm just going to show you the trick. So I can just click here. Okay, and I've clicked, and you've got just ever so faint of a dot. Well, if I hold down the shift key, and then I click again somewhere, I get a straight line right to right from where I started uh, to the next thing. All right, and so I can just I can go crazy with this pencil tool, holding down the shift key, going to a new location, and getting a straight line from the pencil. And so. I'm going to undo all that because I don't really want all that in this texture. It doesn't, well, it wouldn't do anything because none of our UVs line up to that. But that's how I did the lines. Um, I don't want that on. I want the outline to turn on and off, right? And so I followed I followed the outlines um, of the out, in the outline layer and just said, okay, I'm going to go up this way, click, click, right? Shift clicked all the way over. And I got some nice straight lines that way using the pencil tool. So that's one little freebie trick that, that we're going to get um, out of today's rambling. And again, we're just kind of reviewing our work before we move on. Um, the final thing I did was before I started unwrapping and and re uh, remodeling almost, right? So for the arm, right, we've talked a couple of times, um, I had to add some, some more... Um, edge loops and, and things in there to make sure that they, they fold around, especially around this knee. Um, and I've got a bit of an angle at here, you can notice in the knee, because I needed to go up um, 
over the top of this this hole in the back but then I still wanted the knee to be kind of centered on the front so I angled it a bit but anyway um, I needed these lines in here for us to do if we wanted to do a bending knee on this Lego character instead of just a plastic move the leg um, which would have which would look thusly um, so I before I did all that extra work I came over here and I just deleted stuff I hit the delete key boom it's gone okay and so I came back I added my edge loops um, I did my UV unwrap I did the texturing I added the bump I did all the wonderful things and then I'll just walk you through the steps and I did this for the hands and I did this for the legs and I did this for the arm okay and so I again all right I've got this I got this cool arm yay I just did this and now I need to make a copy of it so I use the new mirror tool um, thank you, Maya 16 Extension 2, uh, which we, we've got up there. And it says that nice and prominently at the top of our screen. So I get this mirror tool, and I just turned it on. And by default, uh, we go in the negative direction across the X, which is exactly what I wanted since my character is lined up um, centered on the X axis. And so I got a new arm. Um, with the UVs that flipped over as well. I didn't have to turn this UV flip on. Um, when it mirrored, it mirrored the, the textures. And so the, the line that I've got here is perfectly mirrored over here. Um, and that was, that was cool. So let me show you some other tricks to this because I did want them as separate objects for later. Right now, since I did the mirroring, I use that mirror tool up here. It's one object, right, on our, on our if I pull out our little uh, display of hierarchy here, right arm uh, actually has two arms. So that's not what we wanted. And the pivot's still kind of where we left it. So I'll show you what I did to reseparate those. So I uh, came to face, grabbed all the new faces. Let me turn that off real quick. And I went to mesh and separate, um, which gave me a separate object within this grouping. So now we've got surface one and surface two in this group called right arm, but I want these completely different. So first I'm going to go and name them. Um, and I'm going from my perspective staring at the guy. So I'm going to go to my attribute editor. Poly surface one doesn't make sense. This is right arm. Um, as it's on the right side of my screen, we can quibble about le right versus left all day. And then this one is left arm. So cool. So I went and I renamed them, uh, came up here to the outer group, edit and ungroup, and this should drop them down to the bottom. There we go. Um, but we've still got like this poly mirror, poly separate, all that jazz. So I did go ahead and delete all the history. So now they are completely um, separate entities, uh, capable of their own independent thought. No, not yet, but we'll get there. Um, and now the only problem I've got, now that they're all separated out, is when I separated them, my pivot point kind of reset to, to some weird, almost arbitrary state. It's not even quite the center of the screen if I turn the grid on. It's back a bit. So before we get our skeleton in, I am going to want to move those and rotate those so I could do cool little poses for renders um, in the meantime. So I'll show you some cool things with the pivot that I did when resetting those. So first, let me grab the torso and hide it. And this is going to be display hide. They're all in the same layer right now, so I can't just hide the layer. Um, and that's that's what a you know that's what a Lego character with an empty stomach looks like. But um um. So now I've got my right arm. I can see where the pivot's at. And if I hit the D key, the, right then I can move and I can rotate my pivot point and all that fun and that's great but you know what I can do I can also just grab I can also just click on this highlighted face and boom it puts it right up there it'll angle correctly um, according to the orientation and angle of that face and I'll hit D again and I've reset that Same thing. I don't know what's going on here. I did have to do this a couple of times. So let me do that again. Hit D. Align. And we're good. Odd. Sometimes that the, the rotation will reset itself. And so let me do the same thing here. Align there. D again to turn that off. 
let me go and grab my torso and unhide that so we can see the uh, the end result of all the fun we just did. So I'm going to show the selection because I've got torso selected over on the side. I'll show that. Cool. Um, I didn't go back and regroup my hands. We'll have to do that later. Let's just imagine that. Well, now let's just do it. All right. Now I forget it. We'll do it later. So I've got my arm and strangely the rotation reset itself again. So we'll just go back and we'll do the same thing. Okay, D. Anyway, and now the arm rotates about like we want it to. Um, this is again just so we can we can do cool stuff later. I mean now with it. Um, we'll do even cooler stuff later. So I'm going to reset the rotation. Um, it, this won't matter once we put a skeleton in it. But for now, if I wanted to to move it around, that's what I did. Um, the only other thing left to do, why is this right arm one? Ah, because we had a group named right arm to begin with. Uh, the only thing left to do is if, if we're wanting to be clean and pretty with our layers, check this out. I'm going to turn this off. Yeah, those things that I just separated and ungrouped. Um, in the process, they became orphaned uh, in regards to layers. So I'll just go ahead and select those. Come over here to beveled and right click, add selected objects. Now they're all back. And here's my Boolean guy. And here's my, my other less detailed that we probably don't need anymore. But that's what I did. So now I've got um, all these independent pieces. Right, I've got two legs, I've got hips, I've got two hands, two arms, a torso, a head, and even a hat, um, which I started with a, with a cylinder with a rounded uh, top, and then just started moving things around and scaling. Um, but I'm gonna, I'll take these apart real quick so I can show you some of the bump before we go. All right, so there's this hat. I set it on his head, on a copy of his head, and then uh, did a boolean. So it's got all the all the appropriate pieces, uh, so that it sits right on his head. And then here's this head, and there's that bump map that we were looking at earlier on the torso. So if you take a really hard look at your at your Lego figure, um, you'll see that it has some wording there too. And so just for fun, I put that in there. So move those back down with my Command Z. Everything should be good to go for the future. And I'm going to save the file. Anyway, that's where we're at. Um, I hope you had as much fun uh, texturing all the pieces and, and re-putting them back together. And um, we'll be starting up later this week with um, a custom rig for this guy or, or gal, whichever your character ended up being. Um, we, can, we could um, conceivably, you know, pull the arms out thusly and try an auto rig again um, or even try an auto rig with the arms as they are now. Um, I think we looked in our last video how that kind of got messed up but there's some ways around it. But what we really want to do is for this next next set of stuff just to preview what's coming we're going to create a, a fully custom rig um, and we're going to try and get all of the pieces to just move with with one bone, right? So it's it's going to be a let a lot less fluid um, and and humanoid, and will kind of be that that glorious mix from the Lego movies in between uh, a fully stiff Lego character and a little bit of fluid movement um, that we might expect from a character. So see you soon. Enjoy.